Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to VR News for Thursday, December 29th, 2016. Look what arrived today. Finally, after an epic journey of many trucks, because this thing sure as hell wasn't flying through the air to get to me, um, it's arrived. And most of you by now have obviously seen unboxings. We're not going to bother doing that, but I am going to show a quick peek. If you happen to not be somebody who's seen a video on these, how the box looks and what's inside, there you go. So you can see you get the two touch controllers. And the first take I did of this, guys, my sensor almost fell out. I caught it with my right hand. That would have been just a typical me move. Thankfully, that didn't happen. But there you go. Can't wait to test. And I'm going to really try to do some apples to apples. Find games that were built from the ground up. You know, not do the kind of testing that's, okay, it will work on a Vive if you use Revive. No, no, no. Built from the ground up to really get an idea of what the differences are between the controllers, the Vive and the touch controllers. And there's definitely games available on both to do that type of testing with. Can't wait to get started. All right, let's talk about THX. Now THX in a nutshell was created by Lucas and a small team for pretty much one purpose. And that one purpose was to strong arm slash leverage <laughs> against an industry, theater operators, who seriously needed to upgrade antiquated equipment. And it wasn't and isn't a sound standard so much as it was originally intended to be a symbol of quality, a symbol that this theater has the equipment capable of allowing you to listen to this movie as I intended it to sound, in a nutshell. It gets a little more complicated in that a former PC sound giant Creative Labs purchased the intellectual property for THX, the brand and all the IP in the early 2000s, and now that rests with Razer, who we all know as another PC peripheral company. Now, they've just announced today, they being the THX employees directly, that they have created a new game changer chip. And it's not the most original name. They, well, here we go. THX AAA. That is literally the name. I kid you not. THX AAA. -A -A. I guess, anyways, that's the name. And what they're saying about this is that it's going to offer the world's lowest levels of distortion and noise, incredibly low power consumption, and is going to be positioned for being the amplifier for mobile headsets, VR and otherwise, wireless headphones, VR PCs. So very, very cool. They go on to basically talk and have their statement issued about all the specs. It's very tech heavy. You can check it out on the link below. I'll just put that link here rather than talk about it. They get into, you know, some of the stuff that determines distortion and where the frequencies have to be. Like I said, very technically heavy at the link below. But the gist of what they're saying is this is going to best every other amplifier product in the marketplace. Them's definitely fighting words, and uh, we will see. What's interesting to note is the company's working with Triad Semiconductor, so it's a little incestuous in that they were the firm that Valve worked with for a lot of the key lighthouse tracking technology. So kind of comes a little full circle. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that. Next up, a Reddit user by the name of Poor Speller, and it just dawned on me, what that name means right now, as I said it out loud, a bit more of a somber story in that his father has Alzheimer's and he'd read about a study used in rats. It was a peer reviewed in the nature journal, I believe that a specific frequency of noise and vibrations, visual and, and audio were helpful in fighting Alzheimer's because he says his father's 
condition is deteriorating by the day. I don't know about you guys, but if there's one disease that scares the hell out of me, it's Alzheimer's. Everything I love in life, all my hobbies, they're all about knowledge, things in my head, stats, um, remembering stuff. To have that stripped away from you would just be freaking horrible. Absolutely horrible. Uh, easily in my top three for horrible things to hopefully never get. And hopefully nobody else ever has to. But unfortunately, the statistics bear otherwise. Now, to go through the proper channels to be able to get that to work on humans requires basically a massive bureaucratic effort. And it would take years to get it into a position where you could test on humans. So he reached out to programmers via Reddit. A programmer responded from an indie company called Overflow Games, programmer by the name of Samuel Sekindagu, who said, you know what? I could probably whip something up in a couple of hours. That's exactly what he did. On the HTC Vive, a flashing 40 hertz symbol with a 40 hertz audio cue as well. He still, he, poor speller, is going to go through the channels, bring it to his doctor's attention. It's obviously pretty much a certainty he's going to let his dad try it, whether the doctor okays it or not. Because I think what he's looking for, look, it can't do any harm, but I don't think it's going to have any benefit. If I heard that, I sure as hell still tried on my father. Absolutely. All right. So, yeah, let's move away from the somber a little bit to the next story, which has a little bit more optimism in it. And I'll obviously keep you guys updated on that last one as I hear more. But Gear VR ranked in the top three for Amazon sales of wearable technology, which is very cool. Speculation is it's in the high hundreds of thousands of units. But the way they mined that data, it's a little suspect. It's kind of like the way they inferred X number of Rift sales based on Steam VR alone when there's a lot of Steam, or um, rather a lot of Rift users who don't use Steam at all. So you weren't factoring them in. Uh, it's not quite that extreme, but of that variety, how they got at these final statistics. But either way, to be in the top three period, Pretty damn cool. So, grats to Gear VR on that for sure. Next up, and the last story. This one is uh, is, is kind of neat, but not for the original intent of the article, but rather what it got me thinking about. Now, the point of the article was to highlight a 360-degree short film, kind of artsy, about humanity's cyberpunk future being inevitable, called Escape Code. And the creativity of the video is pretty, pretty bang on. It's, it's amazing. And it really got me thinking, I'm going to wax a little nostalgic here and go a little anecdotal, which I tend to do from time to time, but only in as much to be able to illustrate my point. Back when Commodore was relevant, it was always amazing to see what programmers could wring out of these little machines. And hell yeah, even if you were a console person, you got to think, Based on those specs, what they could wring out of the NES, which I happen to have on my arcade in the background there, or the SNES, the Commodore, the Amiga, whatever, what they managed to wring out of those was nothing short of miraculous, given the amount of memory and the speed of these things. Take that to a whole other level when you start talking about the demo scene. And it was kind of the remnants of the big pirate groups of the 80s kind of this slow conversion by some of them more into demos. In other words, using their powers to not hack and defeat uh, copy protection, but to show what they were capable of as programmers in terms of what they could get out of these machines. You watch some of these demos now, you would think they were impressive even before being told that's a demo running on an actual Commodore 64, 40-year-old computer, right? So where this got me thinking is possibly a whole new renaissance of the demo scene using 360 degree and virtual reality. The benefit of that, and this is what happened in the demo scene time and time again, is it serves as amazing inspiration for traditional game programmers to kind of get them thinking outside of the box. Because when you see what somebody can ring out of a one megahertz, 40 kilobyte machine, you can't help but be impressed. So yeah, really got me thinking, imagine 
just a rebirth of the demo scene, but for VR, what kind of a creative spark that could be for dev programmers, for virtual reality, period. Very cool. All right, guys, that is it for news. Can't wait, like I said, to get my uh, grubbies on those touch controllers and test out the tracking. Keep you guys in the loop. As always, cheers, and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.